to infinity and beyond. What's up, everyone? It's Roger and James here from DizKingdom.com with episode number 114 of Infinity and Beyond. And we're going to be talking about all of this week's video game news. We're going to be talking Marvel Heroes 2016. We're going to be talking Kingdom Hearts 2.8 and also Star Wars Battlefront. So, James, how's it been this week? It's been pretty good. I think we might even talk about some Kingdom Hearts 3.0 in there, too. Who knows? Yeah. But uh, it's been a busy, busy week. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. So. Yeah, I mean, Tokyo Game Show was really very much kind of the kickstart to the week of just Kingdom Hearts news. That was the kind of the big kind of um, the news coming out of there. Um, and then obviously tomorrow we get the new Star Wars Battlefront um, Death Star patch. Or not patch, but upgrade expansion pack. Which I'm really excited about. It's been good to get some new Star Wars content. It's been a while since we've had any console stuff for that one. That's the new cool thing with these, at least with these pa uh, um, sort of expansion packs it kind of spreads out the year a bit you know you sort of a year later after that game's been released we've still got new content coming but let's kick things off first off with kingdom hearts 2.8 hd final chapter prologue so the more i say it the more it just rolls off the tongue <laughs> uh the, that, that's one interpretation of events <laughs> um so they showed off a new trailer um which looked Oh, I mean, the, the CG and the stuff with the um, 0 0.2 looked amazing. It just looked such a great um, such a great one. Yeah, uh, there's one thing you can always count on from Square Enix and their in-house development is the CG is going to look fantastic. I think, I think the only company that does better CG is probably Blizzard, mm -hmm. and even then it's arguable, so... Yeah. I mean, the trailer itself looks good. There's some really great scenes. Um, again, the, all the 0 0.2 stuff looks amazing. Is a you know, Aqua just looks so stunning in the way that they've done it, and um, you know, just some of it just looks really cool. And obviously, Dream Drop Distance is going to look um, pretty. I think that it's going to run very, very well because obviously it was a 3DS game, and now they've ported it to the PS4. It's running. It's going to be running at 60 frames per second, and I. You know, I think it's got that one there. I mean, that one doesn't get that one doesn't get the attention, even though that's going to be the main chunk of the game to play. Um, I think the zero point two is what everyone's excited about because that's the new content. Right, and you know when Square Enix when they do um, adaptations to the consoles, they normally pull out all the stops. It's normally full on. It's only when they do uh, PC adaptations that they kind of yeah. Uh, pull back a little bit looking at some of these final fantasy steam releases but kingdom hearts you know this is their flagship title now and yeah the only, it, it looks fantastic yeah i mean i'm i'm really excited about this one um because it'll be like the first kind of new kingdom hearts experience because i'm i am well let's just say i'm a little bit behind on my kingdom hearts um i started <laughs> playing two i originally started playing the very first game back at the beginning of the summer on the playstation 2 I was starting to really get it. I was starting to like it. So I then went and brought a PlayStation 3 and 1.5 and 2.5, literally for the sole reason of playing, well, it was kind of, I can play then sort of Disney Infinity 1.0 in better quality than my Wii, but more importantly, I wanted to play the two Kingdom Hearts, um, the main ones, and after seeing what they look like on YouTube, so I've been there. Now I've been playing Kingdom Hearts 1 all week. I've got to be honest. <laughs> I have been, I have been stored before. I must have bought a back two hours a night all week so i i have been stomping through there last night i just got through all of the aladdin stuff so i know i'm about 14 years behind everybody so i'm i know this and i've still got two to play i've still got um a chain of me was a chain of memories and then i've got the other so i've still got a few games to go so that's going to keep me going for a while but i can now having been like 13 15 hours into this game i am now sold hooked i'm into this series now so this <laughs> game for me is now kind of the big one i'm looking forward to i'm looking forward to having new content playing on my playstation 4 because rather than dragging out my ps3 kicked enough all the devices and <laughs> just looking yeah. it's, it's looking good so i'm now kind of in this zone i'm um, gonna be um going to egx this thursday so i'm gonna be trying the, the, my first port of call when i get through the door is going straight to the square enix i'm playing to go see kingdom hearts that's my first port of call. They just announced Lego Dimensions are gonna, and Lego Star Wars Force Awakens are going to be there. So that will probably be my second port of call. Depends if I, if Hitman is empty when I or how empty Hitman is. I might poke my head in there while I'm at the booth because <laughs> I'm loving that game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so no, I'm I'm definitely in on the Kingdom Hearts thing. I know for you, you're completely brand new to this as well. Um, so 
is is 2.0 or oh, sorry um 2.8 getting your attention a little bit more now it's getting my attention but again it's one of those things where i don't necessarily want to jump into it until i have a feasible way of playing uh one and two the proper one yeah. and two or 1.5 2.5 yeah. and, and it was weird i was at an, an eb games uh yesterday actually and i I saw in their used bin like 995 for the kingdom hearts 1.5 i was like why why aren't you on the xbox 360 i could play (laughs) you if you were on the xbox 360 and i am actually you know with the hype getting the way it is i'm almost to the point where if a ps3 went up for sale at, at a good price point I could see getting it just for Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5. I am holding out hope, though, that they will announce. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, they, they're they're going to announce the next gen. I, I'm hoping. Yeah. Uh, but if they don't, and they finally announce like a release date for 3, and they're like, mm-hmm. okay, here's when 3 is coming out. We're not going to have 1.5 or 2.5 on the next gen consoles. I will probably, at that point, go and pick up a PS3 mm-hmm. and be like, all right. I'm gonna yeah. play through these. Yeah, I mean, I literally picked up a PS3 Slim for like forty pound on eBay, and it was like, right, that's that was literally that. Like I said, the whole purpose. And I'm now looking at. I never realized really that Kingdom Hearts was as big as it was in terms of size of the game. Then when I looked at like how long to, I was like, you know, sometimes I was just like, if I'm trying to work out like how many videos and stuff, I'll get like a game and go, how long is this game? And it tells you how long most people complete it with, and you can kind of break it down from that. 29 30 hours and then you clicked on the next one 29 30 hours and every single game is I'm going right okay this is going to take me a lot longer than i was planning i was planning just going through one and going through two um but obviously all the extra, extra games are there as well so um this is so in one way the delay pushing it back to the middle, the beginning of uh or the end of january gives me longer to try and get through one or two <laughs> before i get to um to um, dream dot distance so i'm on one hand, it might work out better for me, but I'm kind of a bit bummed that it got pushed back because of Final Fantasy, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I mean, obviously you're not the only one. Kingdom Hearts fans and and Final Fantasy fans, there might be a lot of overlap between them, but I feel like they're pitching to two different uh, teams at this point. Yeah. And you know what? I think Kingdom Hearts might be reaching that point where it's overtaking Final Fantasy as the, uh, as the hype machine, probably because... Mm. You know, there hasn't really been a really good Final Fantasy that universally accepted as a good Final Fantasy since, at the very least, the PlayStation Two, yeah. probably the PlayStation One. Yeah, see, I I never played any of the Final Fantasy. I remember going to the cinema to see the movie that came out years ago when my mate oh, was into it, um, and it, I was completely lost and never clue what was going on. Um, <laughs> it, was ter- it was a terrible movie. It, just, <laughs> it looked beautiful, it, but it, it was. <laughs> Uh, and and for any Final Fantasy fans who are listening or watching, we're talking about Spirited Away or Spirits Away or whatever yeah. the heck it was called, not the Final Fantasy VII movie that was released direct to video a number of years oh, later. Yeah, yeah, I'll see that one. But now it's 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 a, the only they have literally said that the reason they moved it was out the way was because of Final Fantasy, um, which obviously upsets Kingdom Hearts fans, but. Also, I was kind of a little bit. They've also removed the like the worldwide release date. They've moved it now. There is a twelve day delif- difference between Japan and worldwide, which isn't a lot. And it's not like, you know, like Disney Magical World Two, which is out in two. Yeah. So with Kingdom Hearts kind of being delayed, that's one thing. But one of the cool things that um, has come up was on the actual official Japanese website. There is a little but or not even an option. A little grayed out option that says DLC slash special, which. This could indicate the um, DLC coming to the game. Now, it could be extra levels, could be costumes, could be anything of that kind. But this marks the first game to ever have DLC added to a game. So this is where Kingdom Hearts fans were kind of reading the forums and Reddit and stuff. Starting to get a little bit worried because basically up till now, Kingdom Hearts has never had DLC. And DLC is obviously not a, is a major issue for a lot of different games because people don't tend to like it because they think it's extra. Now, to be honest, I view that this is inevitable. This is happening. Kingdom Hearts 3 will have loads of DLC. It's the way games are half the fun now because people won't pay the additional cost. If it was a $90 game because that's what it should be, people generally won't pay it. So the DLC, we don't know quite what it's going to be. It could just be themes. It could be some artwork. It might not even be anything of any real use. But... Um, DLC for Kingdom Hearts looks like it's going to be incoming. 
I mean, I hope that if they're going to do DLC, it's going to be costumes or visual changes only. And I know in, in Kingdom Hearts, you know, the, the the outfit that Sora and the guys are wearing does actually impact the gameplay, but hopefully we're looking at cosmetic stuff. Like, yeah. for instance, you're in the Big Hero 6 area, and I don't know what costume yeah. he's going to have on or whatever, but let's say he's got something that makes him look like Baymax. Yeah. I would say, you know... Make a DLC where it's the armored version of Baymax versus mm. the regular version yeah. of Baymax. And maybe it has a different ability, maybe a passive ability or something like that. Yeah. But nothing that's going to break the game. That's mm. what I would like to yeah. see. We'll no. see what they actually I think it's going to be interesting with the 2.8 because obviously it was a 3DS game that didn't have DLC. So, they, so there's that thing about oh, what, where they're going to add it into. I think they generally they can add something into it if they want to make some money off of it. 0.2 is a brand new build, so it's a lot easier for them to do it, but it's only supposed to be a short chapter, so it's going to be you know, questionable of what they can do with it. I can't see them doing extra chapters because at the end of the day, they'll, this, this, that doesn't seem like this is at the point of this game. No, but it does leave the door open for them if they have to delay Kingdom Hearts 3 again, where they can be like, okay, we're delaying it. But here's chapter point three or whatever. Mm. It's a two-hour-long mission, and it'll, you know, it's something for mm. you. So maybe that's the idea. I yeah. don't know. It depends. It depends how I'm still thinking. You know, it depends on how, how this sort of Hitman um, trial that they have been doing has gone down very well. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe just release a world every two months. With, you know, by the time we get to uh, whenever free is out, probably would have been in line. I mean, the standing, the amount of memes and stuff about. Kingdom Hearts 3's <laughs> release date and stuff. I saw a great one yesterday of like um, Doc Brown from Back to the Future get back. It was 2050. It still hasn't arrived yet. I think there's, <laughs> you know, I think it'll be in so long since the last one. Even though they keep churning out games, I almost feel like had they re not had different names and they've just been like Kingdom Hearts 8, you know, we were waiting on Kingdom Hearts 9 or something, people wouldn't quite be feeling the same way. Right. Although my understanding is all these other games, like on the DS and mm. and whatnot, aren't fully fledged things. There's like some that are you, you fight with cards and some yeah. that you know, yeah, you, you do other stuff. So it's it's a different mechanic. So I can yeah. see why it's not like Kingdom Hearts Six or whatever. Yeah. Now I can see why it's um, definitely kind of that weird thing of <laughs> it's just like. I don't know. It should be cool. I'm really excited about it. I feel like at this precise moment, especially for like Disney fans, this is going to be your core Disney experience. I think for the next six months to a year on consoles. So you know, this it's going to be a good thing to get you into it. I know a lot of Disney fans have been used to it. I think because I'm I'm late to the game, it's kind of still quite new, exciting because I'm learn I'm learning it for the new t first time. I think that's what everyone's excited about with for zero point two because it's new content. Oh yeah, and I'm hoping to jump into the game at some point. I, I won't harp on that anymore, yeah. but yes, I'm hoping to jump into it. Well, so. the um, when well, ne next year is the 15th anniversary of the game. They um, during um, during the Tokyo Game Show, they did say that I think the the creator had said that you know next year's a lot of big things. They're making some announcements in in March because they got this, the what the World Tour sympathy thing starting and. Gen so they're making an announcement. Now, wherever, now there could be a couple of things. It could be free. It could be some details on that because there was supposed to be some details coming this winter, but there was no there was no stinger at the end of the two point eight trailer sort of saying anything about free because I think they obviously wanted to get two point eight out rather than trying to focus on a game coming out after. It doesn't make any sense. And it'd be a bit like sort of saying, you know. Check out Infinity War just before Civil War come out. It's like no, they they got to focus on the one that's coming out now to sell. But it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if we if I saw a 2.9 full version come to Xbox, PlayStation, literally as a and some people might say, well, we don't want that because it might delay the game. It's a different game for a different team doing ports and stuff. So I'm going to expect them to come up on stage, and you're going to see the big Kingdom Hearts logo, and you're going to see a three pop up, <laughs> and then it's going to go three fifty eight slash three, and everyone's just going to be like, "Oh, come on!" Yeah, <laughs> it's really funny because every time I put like a story up about Kingdom Hearts, I always get there'll always be a comment or a tweet, just like, "Just give me free already! Stop with all this stuff!" And it's like, okay. Um... Yeah, it's like you can see like this. Everyone just they just want that third episode. They don't want they don't want any more stuff. It's you know th this is hardly the only company where this is going on, but it it's it's one of the more prominent ones between this and Half Life Three. Mm. We're just kind of like, just give us the game, please. 
<laughs> yeah, so it should be should be fun. I must admit, it's it's the one game I'm looking forward, to. and I'm quite excited about this this week actually being able to um, sort of actually play it because it should be um, and see it in person and sort of see all the bits and pieces. But yeah, so there we go. So Kingdom Hearts um, two point eight coming now in January. Been delayed a few weeks now. To, I think it's like the twenty fourth of January. Um, so that's looking pretty cool. Um, so then let's flip over now to uh, Star Wars Battlefront, which comes out, the new Death Star expansion pack comes out for Season um, Pass holders um, tomorrow. So that's on my list. I literally plan, they kind of released this very last minute. They were sort of, they hadn't officially announced it until like two, three days ago, which was quite surprising how they just kept saying September. Yeah, it it definitely feels like kind of maybe that they rushed this out because they need to have this out before the Rogue One stuff starts up. And Rogue One is definitely starting to hit the high gear in terms of media blitz. And obviously they don't want anything to over uh, overshadow that. Uh, that said, in, in addition to this, they also did last week um, the Bespin uh, expansion pack was free to play. Uh, not to own, but to play it that week. So... That was my first experience mm. with the Bestman pack. I hope they keep doing this. I hope that like a couple months from now, the Death Star pack will be free for a week, and I'll yeah. get to experience it then. Because I'm not, I'm not paying for the season pass. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I jumped into the season pass um, pretty much from the day one because I wanted to have the content, and I, and obviously we're doing the website and doing all the videos and stuff. It was kind of like right, I you know I need to do this. This is part of what it is. But I'm gonna be honest. I think the the price of that season pass did put a lot of people off because you didn't know what you were getting. Um, forty forty. A forty pound season pass was nearly was the price of the game. This is not like the the Lego Star Wars Force Awakens where you literally throw f f five six quid at it in there for you're done. This was a big se this was a big decision, and obviously I think it put a lot of people off. The fact you can pick up Star Wars Battlefront so cheap now, I mean I've seen it in some you know really really cheap. And I'm going to say if you haven't picked it up, pick up. Pick up the normal pack. Just pick up the one. Don't worry about the um or the expansion stuff. Just play. It's a beautiful game. It's a lot of fun. You know, it's a lot more casual shooter. I and that's probably why I like it. Uh, but all these expansions are looking cool. We're gonna get Bosk. We're gonna get um, Chewbacca. Gonna have some more space stuff, which is space battle, which I think is a cool bit. Yeah, and and you know that's what obviously what the Death Star is gonna largely focus on. Plus, I think they have the game mode that's gonna include both the space battle and uh. Hmm. not ground-based, but fighting in the Death Star, I think is what I read. Yeah. So that'll be cool. I just wish they added some more ships to it. I mean, I know they're adding um, Darth Vader and the TIE Advance, and I know that Luke Skywalker will pilot Red 5, but it's still just X-Wing, A-Wing, yeah. TIE Fighter, TIE Interceptor. This was the perfect chance for them to add in some additional stuff. So yeah, well, we've got that, and then we're gonna have the, the the VR expansion in December, and then also gonna have the Rogue One expansion in it. So we've got still got two more expansions coming. I think that's gonna keep the game ro uh, rolling along quite nicely into the new year, and then at which point uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised if at the beginning in the next year or E three time they're gonna be like Star Wars Battlefront is out for holiday season this year. So whether or not we see any more ex extensions or anything like that, hard to tell. But I know they're bringing other teams to work on Battlefront. But no, it, it should be good. I'm looking forward to it. I'm kind of excited to play Chewbacca. Bosk, or, is it, how do you pronounce that? I, I've always said Bosk. So. Oh, Bosk, Busk, Busk, or whatever. Um, Lizard yeah, I'm not, really, I'm not really too bothered about him. I, these bounty hunters that literally are in the movie for three seconds, I've never, I've, I've never really fully grasped the what you know they look cool and stuff but i've never really grasped why i remember having the action figures of these as a kid and they were just leading a cabin photo that used to throw around <laughs> i mean at least dengar here showed up in the freemaker adventures so yeah. there was that but it's definitely one of those things where like they were in empire strikes back mm -hmm. the only one who's important is boba fett and surely there are other characters you could be using instead yeah. of these guys yeah but no, it's, it's it's looking good. I'm I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm, the Rogue One stuff is the one that's going to be cool to see them bring in. I haven't I'm going to be honest, haven't really played um the Battlefront since the Cloud City expansion for a couple. I, this is the thing: the game comes, the expansion pack comes out. I play it for like a week or two, and then I put it away again, which is you know pretty much fine. I mean, the trouble is now, especially when you're going to, is you've probably got some players that have been playing it since launch that are so good at it, you just get destroyed. <laughs> I mean, but that's 
both the biggest strength and the biggest weakness of this game is that, you know, as a player who doesn't play very often, I, I played last week for the first time in several months, is you feel like you can go and you can you can get some points, you can kill some other players and some other players will kill you. The problem and the advantage is I've, I feel very little of the game is skill-based. Mm. Like, more often than not, when I lose... Uh, a fight with somebody. I never feel like they were necessarily better than me. Mm. It's just more of their shots hit, mm. which, I mean, that sounds like, yes, they were better at targeting, <laughs> but at the same time, I'm kind of like, well, have you seen how accurate the guns are? Yeah. I mean, so, I'm, yeah. I'm, what I find really is I find the offline play a lot more enjoyable because I don't die as much. Um, you know, I've been able to go on a 100 kill rampage with deaths with um, Darth <laughs> Vader or something. Whereas in the real world, I'm gone too quickly to enjoy it. So, but I I still like that kind of um, just cat. See, I I've always liked the campaign. I think that was the thing that was missing from it. You know, I always remember playing um, um, Ghost the Ghost Recon games and the Halo game. You know, playing through like the, the, the story mode and the, that was what I got. The uh, the actual online stuff. It's the same thing with Overwatch last weekend. It's like you know, I was playing it going, this is fine, but I've got Battlefront. And I was just that was all I kept thinking. We go, it's just I've got another shooter game that I don't play very enough, and like playing that one, I don't need to buy this. This is not offering me anything different than what I've already got. And I think that was the that was the thing with with Overwatch for me was I've already got Battlefront. Yeah, and as I said last week, I'm not a competitive gamer. I'm not a multiplayer gamer, so I need the campaign. Mm -hmm. And you know, last week I ended up playing Bioshock because they. Uh, relaunched that, uh, remastered and everything like that. And it was fantastic because it's a fantastic single player component. I had so much more fun playing that than I did Overwatch. Yeah. Uh, I will say the people that I played Overwatch with were awesome uh, and it was awesome playing with them, but I felt no need to jump into Overwatch no. after it was done. No. I think that I think that's the thing with Battlefront. Is it's one thing that I, I know that they are going to be adding to number two next year. So, But the expansion pack's coming out I'd say so. Next week, I'll go into a little bit more detail when I've actually played it and played the maps and stuff. Um, also, this week, um, Pirates of the Caribbean officially came to um, Disney Magic Kingdoms, and boy, was Captain Jack expensive! Yeah, what would, what did he end up being Four like 450 yeah. uh, crystals, which is like a little bit less than twenty dollars? Well, he came up the the, the 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 screen shot up and said, "Buy him and buy some gems." Half oh, right, price but... for seven ninety nine, so that's that's about eight pound. So that's probably it's... ten twelve dollars. And I just it's remember, ten dollars here. And I Sorry. just went, "You're kidding! You are having a joke because this you're not even playing as these characters. This is just I was. I'm gonna be honest. I was very much like, whoa. Had that been one ninety nine, two ninety nine, I might have been a little bit more thing. But I'm thinking, you know, th this is like sort of the crossy road kind of thing of that seventy nine p." For a character, I'm not paying seven ninety nine for essentially just an option to select some more options. There's, there's, you're not even playing as them. Yeah, uh, this is like, well, what's the point in getting Jack Sparrow? The point in getting him is that it's easier than to unlock uh, Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan because he helps get their items. Mm. But, I mean, this is still just a management game. This is still mm. just me going... I tap on Jack or Will or whoever. Yeah. I send him on a mission, and when he's done with the mission, I tap on him again, tap on him again, yeah. and send him on another mission. There are cool little story bits in there, but ten dollars yeah. or or however is just way too much for these characters, and that's on sale. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. It's, the, the, the more that that there was actually a little bit to me was like, whoa, this is this is silly prices. This is like you know, I remember mm -hmm. when they did the Frozone pack for like two ninety nine pounds. Like, yeah, that's fine. Oh, that's fine. It was you know that's the price of a you know a coffee or whatever. But seven ninety nine, and I you know like, I don't enjoy the game enough to pay that much. That was that was the bottom line. Eight pound. That's a full blown retro game. That's a full on. That's a season pass. That's a, a, an indie game. You know that's. This is just just not worth that. Th and I think there was a definite kind of reaction of like. <laughs> Yeah, and th these are the prices that uh, pushed me off of Marvel Avengers uh, Academy, which is the same yeah. style of game. And if you're looking at it and go, oh, you want us 
to spend twelve dollars on Jessica Jones. You want us to spend a variable amount of money on Electra because you're you're going to put her in a random hmm. pack that you have to pay for. It's like no, I'm not doing this. You 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 have to give me better value for my money than yeah. this. Yeah, and I, yeah. It, it's problematic. It. It's like you said. If it was a frozen price, if it was four ninety nine or three ninety nine uh, dollars, and you got the the special building, the gem yeah. building that comes with it, sure, I could totally see plant paying that. Um, the other thing for this one though is, this is I think the first time that any characters in this game are modeled on actual humans. Yeah. Like all all the other ones are animated characters. These are yeah. the first ones who are live action and. It's kind of a little bit weird. Mm. They look strange in this format. I, I I've Jack only really at, looked yeah. at Will Turner, but yeah, Jack looks okay. So the other two that look there. So they brought them both in there. I mean, I'm just trying at the minute to try and grab some of the of the pirates booty kind of stuff to try and unlock Will Turner. Um, but then you've got the attractions. You got um, was it the Kraken? You've got the Sea Serpent Swing, the Tortuga Tavern. You've also got some t pirate generic pirate kind of decorations. You've got the the float. There are two new areas in space now available in Space Mountain to buy. They've also done the only good thing is they have made the chests a lot better. Yes, they are, um, they are a lot easier to get now. You can get Prince Charming's gloves from Pratlam and Go Discs. Not that I've ever seen either of them. I've never seen one. Well, I've, ne I've never got one. Actually, since the update, I have seen more gold and platinum chests than I have in like the last two or three months total. Yeah. And the first gold chest I got actually had a uh, uh, not Tortugas Tavern, the other one, one of the yeah one of the pirates uh, buildings in it. I have I ran out of space, so I don't have a place to put it yeah. yet. But I I got one of those out of the gold and out of the regular chests, the bronze and the silver. I've gotten tons of um, upgrade items, yeah. whereas before I was getting log benches, lots yeah. of log benches. I think they realized that that was that it wasn't working. I mean, I got to the point where I wasn't even bothering looking for them because it was all I was getting was rubbish. Because all yeah. I was getting was the the basic bronze one and uh, the odd silver. I've never even seen the one. You know, whether or not that's because I haven't upgraded. To, I've only got like the, the basic um, allowance. I don't know. It's just you know I'm playing it and I'm pl and going for it and it's and, you know it's fun just to go on to it in you know, a couple of minutes at a time. But I think that's the trouble for it. It is literally a couple of minute game and I'll put it down. It's, it's just like, well, I think I've been saying this for a while. There's, there's nothing long term to put, to keep, keep you playing. Mm -hmm. You can't sit there and do like, you know, do more than maybe five minutes max, even if you've left everything for 24 hours. Once you send everyone on their skills and collect everything, that's it. You put it down for another, and unless you want to keep paying and that's, uh, that game's never a, that constant spending, I mean, I can see how someone maybe just want to keep... Sp but you actually just become accustomed, just put it down, and then you move on. Yeah. And the uh, the thing with it is, it's got a fun little story. When you're doing actual story missions, they're fun. The The characters have cool things to say and whatnot. But well, this update is... This update's a little bit worrying, because part you read the patch notes, a number of the characters, in order to first unlock them, they increased the number of items you need. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you've got guys like Cinderella and, and the pirates who aren't necessarily all that easy to unlock without mm -hmm. paying money. And this sounds like a delaying tactic to me. This sounds like we don't have content planned for the near future, so we need to make the content that we do have last longer. And that's, yeah, cause I see that's here, kind of problematic. Yeah, like Finn needs, you need, um, it, it's gone up from 29,000 to 40,000. Um, it's like... Sa Sally May, you now need um, scare counts is eight to fifteen. Is now that's a big jump, you know. Roz, you know, is ten to fifteen. Um, so they've definitely done that. They've also fixed some of the bugs. Um, I don't. It, it's cool. I'm glad that they're doing this and kind of do it. But like you said, it feels like they're trying to spread the content out a little bit, trying to delay you a little. Uh, maybe because they people were flying through it quicker than they were expecting, and they're just literally waiting there, and they weren't expecting that. Yeah, that's probably what happened because, you know, they haven't, other than the pirate update, which they just did, they haven't added anything since uh, Cinderella and Prince Charming, and that was a while ago. And even that didn't really have much of an update. It was just these two characters. One of these characters is insanely hard to get because you have to get the chest for him. And then the other character, if you do happen to get him, well... Now you've got to do this mission that takes like what four or eight hours or something like that, and you might get the item that you're looking for. Yeah. So 
I mean, and also the thing, apparently it's a story you tell me. I don't, that's just a bit I just keep tapping. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the times it, it really kind of is, is retelling the stories we already know, but they kind of adapt them here and there. And there's a whole story with Maleficent trying to take over the kingdom and all that. But it's not necessarily a great story. No. Now, I'm, I may rag on uh, Marvel's Avengers Academy a lot, and it deserves it. But one thing that they have done that this game has not is continually adding content. They've got events going on all the time, and if they don't have events, they're adding story content. So points to them for that. Just lower your darn prices, guys. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's it's the trouble is, and this is what, you know, there's been this kind of this feedback, you know, especially like from the Disney Infinity fans about, you know, not liking mobile games and people, you know, you don't... <laughs> There's still this and fundamental thing. This free to play mode makes you want to play for free. You don't want to spend any hard dash. And while they're trying to, they're trying to work out ways of trying to get out of you. You know, even Disney Crossy Roads, they've been t tinkering around with different options. Of we'll get, you know, they launch a one and they give you a, a cheap figure or a couple of cheap ones, and then they, you know, then they take that away and stuff. So that's you know, just trying to work it out. It definitely feels like between Crossy Roads and Disney Magic Kingdoms adding. Both of them with Captain Jack Sparrow. They know that Captain Jack Sparrow is wanted, and they jack the price up. Oh, yeah. Uh, no pun intended, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <Shabby>. <laughs> I mean, this is this is what mobile gaming is. They, they hit you with the small prices. It's like, oh, it's only 99 cents. Oh, it's only a pound or two pounds. And then they slowly creep it up, and before you know it, it's $9, $10, $11. And... They are banking on you going, well, I've already spent $10, so mm. uh, what's another $10? And, and falling victim to sunk costs. So. Yeah. And, then, and it works. And then, you, then you, you know, your friend's kids have wrapped up an £800 phone bill on their iPad. Because <laughs> they just go, bye, hopefully, bye, bye. Hopefully it's your friend's kids and yeah. not your kids. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, yeah. It's like, I've said to him, it's like, you need to make sure that, that you take off all your credit card details off of those like, app accounts and you only give them gift cards from now on. <laughs> make um, them get their own gift cards. Yeah, it's just, it's one of those situations, I think, you know, with with this game. It's it's good. I'm glad they're adding content, but those prices, that just seems like silly. I mean, I, it seems so weird that sort of like the Incredibles event was such a success and that worked. Prince Charming was a bit like, oh, this is cool, but no, everyone got frustrated. And Captain Jack has just been, money, we want money. That's, that's basically how it seems to have rolled. I would not be surprised if we found out that this game was um, kind of in trouble in the next couple of months, if, especially if they don't release any new content after this. Uh, and I'm not saying, like, release new content next week, but... You know, we need to know what's coming, and we need to know before it actually gets here. Yeah, and obviously the the company as well are, are having some issues with. Um, I think Games Loft are they? I can't remember if if they they're being they're trying to be brought out by Ubisoft or something. There's something going on where there's a a kind of a big trying to be a big takeover by another company. Either either they're doing it to somebody else or somebody else. I think it's them doing it to um, Ubisoft or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was. I don't know. I yeah. honestly don't know about but there's, that. There's, some, there's something going on with, within the back thing. So whether or not that's why the prices are being jacked up, or who knows. Okay, so let's shift gears now. We're going to go over to Marvel Heroes 2016, which finally delivered on giving us the update of what they've been teasing us for a while. Because I'm going to be honest, watching the Reddit subgroup was, was <laughs> quite fun this week. Because um, there's been a lot of... Um, you know, when they sort of said, oh, we've got a great announcement, and then they didn't deliver, and then, you know, they still got stuck in legal, and, yeah, the, the reaction on Reddit was not so good. <laughs> well, and with all due respect to the Reddit, um, it, it's not one of the best subreddits. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's filled with a lot of people who are angry yeah. <laughs> with, uh, with Gazillion, the, the company that makes Marvel Heroes. So it's not always the best place yeah. to go for unbiased information. That said, it is still a good place to get information. The devs are active there and all that yeah, stuff. No, so It's cool. I like, and sometimes it's nice just jumping in on these ones. I do it on all the different games. I'm starting to use it more and more rather than the Facebook groups. It seems a little bit easy to find stuff. Um, but yeah, so they've announced a big change. Um, I mean, they, they basically... They're giving a major update to the game coming soon. They are upgrading all the characters, how they look. They are 
sort of slimming down all the characters. So, so I'm going to let you explain it because there was tons of it. I'm sure you understood it better than I did. So <laughs> the basics of it is, and I'm probably not going to do it complete justice anyway, is um, every character, as you level them up, they get skill points, which is typical of this kind of game. And you get so many per level, and you know, there are other ways of getting bonus skill points, and then you had to choose where you wanted these skill points to go. You know, there are three trees, and each tree had so many skills, and yeah. you know, you could max out some skills, and you had to pick which ones you want. They're doing away with that. You, you pay one skill point, and you unlock the skill, and it will automatically scale with your level now. So they're, they're, they're making it easier to decide what kind of character you want each uh, hero to be or hero or villain yeah. to be and in doing this basically every single character that they've released is getting uh, skill tree updates across the board Yeah. Uh, so they've been doing them they're calling quality of life upgrades and they've been rolling them out piece by piece over the years and now they're just doing we're doing everyone all at once every single character uh, you're going to get all your skill points back you're going to start from scratch you, you'll still have your levels and stuff yeah. but this is actually time. the second time they've done that. Uh, they did they did a full quality of life change a couple years ago for everybody. But obviously this is even bigger now because mm. there's more characters and there's going to be some visual updates in there as well. And they are changing the fundamental way that you do skill. Yeah. So, and, and they've even said they want, you know, um, each skill tree to be more viable because... As with any game like this, World of Warcraft or, or um, I don't even know any other MMOs anymore, Path of Exile, uh, although there are choices, and there are a lot of skills, inevitably if you want to be involved in actual events with people, they're going to expect you to use certain builds with certain skills and you don't really get as much choice as you think you do. No. But no, I mean, I, I sort of read through this and... It, um, I'm going to be honest, this is this kind of thing, because I was saying, like, it being a major update and all the rest of it. I read it, and I was a bit like, there's a lot of detail here, there's a lot of minor details, but the idea that this this is not kind of, for me, was like a content that was like, um, get people in. This is not an idea of, right, we're going to get people in. This is about, they're changing it to make it look, to basically be easier to get new people in, but that was the way I looked at it. It was very much a kind of trying to sort of simplify it. Yeah, there's definitely an element here where, you know, a lot of the changes they've been making lately to this game have been designed towards new players. Mm -hmm. They updated the prologue mission, they updated the chapter one missions, uh, but they haven't been adding in too much for uh, end game content. They added some new terminals, uh, you know, one shot kind of things. But, you know, if you are a raider, if you want, you know, that kind of experience, uh, it's the same raid experience that it's been for the past, what, two years now? Mm -hmm. And there's no announcements on updated stuff. So they're definitely looking at new players rather than old players for the most part. Yeah. And, like, I think there's a lot of this on, like, um, I know, like, when I put out the story, I had a lot of tweets from people going, you know, is this coming to console? Is it coming to console? Um, even I said in it, you know, you know, the fact that when you're playing with your Xbox controller, it will actually have the, the buttons on the screen from the controller telling you which ones to use. So it's been set up to use. So it feels like it, this could jump to console like DC um, Universe did. And I think it would be huge. I think this could be a, it could be the exactly what this game needs to jump to the, to, to go, to jump to that next level. If they put it onto the two consoles, this game could be massive in a very, very bigger way with a bigger audience, and I think they can sell more characters a lot quicker. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, as much as I love PC, I love gaming on my PC. It's my primary gaming platform. I have to acknowledge that the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, all those have a much bigger install base, and you're going to get a lot more gamers interested in it by having it on these systems. Mm. And these updates to the skills, they said specifically that, you know... Depending on what character you're using, some characters, you know, you only need to use five skills actively at any given time to be effective. Whereas other characters, such as Doctor Strange, if you want to be a good Doctor Strange player, and I imagine there's going to be a lot of those coming up with that movie coming yeah. out, uh, you need 11 or 12 skills that you're going to weave between. Mm. And, and if you're not using all of them, you're not doing a good job. 
and they want to change that mm. because they want these characters to stand on their own merit, not on how willing you are to be basically using an old EverQuest term, uh, weaving on the keyboard. So, yeah. But also I think as well as they want to try and make all the heroes kind of the same power, if that, if that was a thing. I mean, it, I, they're going to say that. Obviously, they want them all at the same power level, so if you want to play Doctor Strange, no one's going to be, oh... Why would you play Doctor Strange? He's so weak. Why would yeah. you play with that? You should be playing with War Machine instead. Yeah. Uh, you know, don't play with Iron Man. He he's too weak. You should play with yeah. you know Captain Marvel or whatever. So th- obviously they want them all on the same power yeah. scale. Obviously that's also never going to happen. No. Uh, just can't happen. But hopefully they'll get them close mm. enough that you can play who you want without people just mm. being like, ha, you're stupid for playing that. The only the only thing that gets me with the game. It's all the crafting and all the constant picking stuff up and filling up my chest too quickly, because I don't really know what I'm doing with it, um, and I think that's the problem. And I, that's my, as a newbie, because I still I still consider myself a newbie because I'm only like halfway through the main story, like level forty or something like that. When my what, you know, all that is where it got confusing. Playing through the main story and up leveling up your characters seemed that was normal. That was fine. You know, that's a lot of fun. And I would really recommend playing it for the story mode. It's all the it's all the extra stuff that you don't really oh, yeah. know what you're doing with it, and the details of how to do it and why you're doing it and what you're doing with it. It's a bit like I don't really. When you're playing a game where you're playing through the story mode, it doesn't make any sense because it doesn't seem to give you. It's crafting is a big part of games, but you know. <laughs> It doesn't mean anything when you just want to play the story. It just it's just you constantly I'm just moving stuff from stash to stash because like well I suppose I should keep it. I don't know what I'm doing with it. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is definitely one of the big problems with the game is do I need to keep this, do I not? At this point I've leveled up a number of characters to sixty, the level mm-hmm. cap in the game, and anything that is purple quality or lower that's uh green, blue, purple or grey. Mm instantly gets vaporized. I have my system set up to just vendor them immediately. I don't even yeah. see them. They just disappear. Yeah. And it and that has saved me so much time and energy mm. because I don't need to sort through this nonsense. Mm. I've played the game enough that I know what I need and what I don't need, yeah. but like you or a new player coming in, you look at all the items that you need. You've got five equipment slots. You've got a ring... You've got a medallion, you've got a legendary, you've got relics, you've got four artifacts. Yeah. Uh, I'm probably even forgetting an item, and then you've got other items on top of that, and there is nothing in the game to tell you, oh, it. you want this item, yeah. you need this item, you need yeah. that, oh, you don't need that item, that's just trash. It's that kind of thing, like, you know, you know you want the XP, or you know what those little green dots, you know, you need them, you know, when you get your currency, I've got lots of currency, I, I don't, I'm not bought anything with it, I just keep stacking it up. Keep well, that's, that's the other thing. You know, and then you, I do know, like, you know, internity splinters are to buy characters. That's basically what that has become. So you instantly know, oh, I can eat that. And, but there was so much in there. And I do feel like, it, you know, as a new player, that is the one thing. It's like all those, like, boots, you know, how many pairs of boots do you need? Um, it almost feels like once you've got them, maybe if they should just give you currency or something instead. So you, or rather than, just, you know, you kill a boss and suddenly get spread with all this stuff and you're like, I don't, it's like, why if I can't sell it? It's just, I don't know, it's just, it almost feels like they, they're giving you a little bit too much stuff to choose from. Yeah. And hiding Oh, absolutely. It, and hiding it. And that's my one one issue. I mean, you find it a lot with games where they give you different kind of currencies because they're trying to confuse you from spending real money. Um, but this just feels like a lot of it just feels like unnecessary. So I think from, the, from a, like a console player, it feels a little bit unnecessary and a little bit confusing. Um, but I am, like I said, I am, all these updates are coming in October. It wouldn't surprise me if this game was, you know, they've been rolling it out to lots of different areas. I think they, like I say, it would not surprise me if they bring it to the the consoles because DC on, on Universe Online is massive. It takes a lot of money. It's still a huge free-to-play game on both consoles, you know, I and now with these consoles just being basically borderline PCs, they can. It, it, I can't. It's but it's obviously they haven't got the budget of a big console game, and that's the difference. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll have to see what happens, but 
you know, one of the things, uh, and this was missing from their update plan, is they need to consolidate those currencies. Mm. Because, you know, you've got Omega drives and you've got um, uh, the Colson files and, and all sorts of fun stuff, armor drives. And if you don't know exactly what you want to buy with them, yeah. it, then you're not going to buy anything with them because most of the items they sell are completely useless. Mm. You know, like uh, Jocasta sells one item, which is great if you want to buy be a summoner, if you want to have a, a little dude following you around, if your character can do that. And then the rest of the stuff is completely useless. Mm. And that, and they really need to just kind of consolidate everything, make it easier for everybody. Yeah. Not new players, not old players, everybody. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like this kind of thing of... As a new player in it, the thing that you know, you know you want you want to level the characters up, but you also want to get all the characters, you want to get all the team ups, you want to get all of that, and all that extra stuff with you know gems and all these things like that, they don't mean anything because all you're looking for is going, oh, I want Captain Marvel or I want Captain America. That is what's drawing you. And obviously, they want to get you to pay to buy those characters, which is fine, you know. But yeah, that's my one concern. That's my one issue that. Um, with this game now i love playing it but i know the fact if they put it on that console i'll play it so much more um than i would do on my pc it's just something about it's just being able to sit back on the couch and play it on the big screen rather than a little laptop now you could connect it up and do all the rest of it and i know some people will do that but i've tried connect it just doesn't work properly well for it, it doesn't, <laughs> it's got lag and all the rest of it but i know that if they go console and i think there's a lot of people that know obviously the pc people are like no you don't need to go on console yeah. consoles are pcs now that's all they are yeah and then you also you can't overestimate that thing where both the ps4 and the xbox one right now they have uh you know their main page and all of the games are listed right there or, or you know the games you've played recently and having that on the screen being like oh yeah marvel here is it sitting right there mm -hmm. just button right over to it I'll play it. It, yeah. it's, it keeps it right there, whereas now you either, on the PC, you either have it in your Steam profile and you have to list through all your Steam games, or you have to go to your Windows button or your Mac button and, and yeah. find it in your computer. Yeah. I'm going to be honest, this new update, um, I'm excited to see what it is because it might simplify it for me. And I, I almost feel like this is, I almost feel like this is, the, I'm the target audience for this. This is who they're aiming at, is oh, yeah. Marvel fans that maybe aren't quite so... You know the hardcore fans that have been around for years. They, they, you know, especially if they've already got all your. If you've got all sixty characters, you might be buying all the new ones coming up. But they need to get more people into the game, and also they've invested in it for years. I think this one is. I think this game could be around for a long time, um, with constant upgrades and stuff, which is, might be why they've slowed down the character de delivery and system of having one like every two months because and costume change because if they go too fast and give you too much they'll they're going to sink the game well i mean the real question is to see whether or not they'll get the license renewed in 2019 when when it expires for them obviously they've got x-men characters in the game fantastic four characters in the game and we'll have to see where marvel sits with those when those come out because we know that they they're not happy with it but a lot can change in three years yeah um Actually, but yeah, this update. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say they're probably in a better up, a better position because of the whole license licensing thing that they're doing. You know, if this is the PC game that they're doing, they've already got an establishment. It depends on what money they're bringing in for Marvel and all the rest of it. Um, it does feel like you know to shut this one down and launch a brand new one. That's going to be hard for people to kind of accept. I think that's going to be a, a tricky one. Especially, I think now you know this whole thing of like. If this is not console gaming where people buy the game and move on. You know, people have invested a lot of money in this game. Oh, yeah. Uh, I have invested more money in this game than I probably would have if it had just been a, a regular uh, purchase, you know, like an Ultimate Alliance kind of thing. Um, I've definitely spent more than $60 on it, which is more than uh, a regular game costs. And I kind of justify it. I've put several hundred hours into it. Uh, I don't really want to look at my steam profile to see how many hours because it might might be depressing but it, it's been worth the, the money for me this is one of the few games i do come back to frequently um i'm looking forward to the update because for me i've got a large number of characters i, I might actually even have all of them i'm not sure off the top of my head um 
this will be a reason to go back and play with each and every one of them to see what they changed with once the update comes out. Yeah. See, this, I think, is like, that's the one thing, like, going for the main story and then because they keep bringing out a new character. It's amazing how long that story is. I mean, I'm only, like, I feel like half the way through it. But it is it is so much fun, and I do feel like, you know, there's a great story there for people to, and I don't know if it gets lost in the fact of that people don't know that it's there. There is this great story. There's this long, you know, you're gonna gonna if you're going into this game, you can spend, I don't know how long it's gonna take you to get through that main story. You know, I feel like I've been playing it 15, 20, 30 hours, and I don't feel like because I keep getting distracted with events and terminals and all this kind of stuff. You know, there's still and you know, there's so much stuff there. I do feel it gets maybe it's not being viewed by so many Marvel fans because it's just a deemed an MMO. Well, that and, you know, you don't even have to play the story. You can go right into the game and you can go to, to Midtown Patrol or, or Industry City Patrol and you can level 1 to 60 all the way through without ever touching the story. And I suspect there's a lot of number of people who do that. Um, nowadays, that's actually how I level because I've been through the story a couple times. But yeah. it, it is a shame. I think it's a story that's worth checking out at least once and you don't have to pay anything. Yeah. No to get from level 1 to 60, leveling through the story, or any of the uh, the content, because the, the actual game content is free. It's only yeah. the characters you buy. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no reason really not to, uh, unless your computer can't handle it, or you're holding out for a console release yeah. or whatever. It, it's it's a fun story. I think it was written by Brian Michael Bendis, who is yeah. a, uh, a major comic writer, and he knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, even just the way that the... It- the, the video kind of looks like with the style it does look it does look very comic book and I think it's really cool um, kind of help but feel like they need to add more like mini chapters and mini stories to kind of for long term for to keep because I do feel once you finish that main story if that's the end of it it would be nice to kind of maybe have chapters on little sh- like you say one shots with that kind of thing but obviously there's money and this game right. has to be there's that toss up between you know what they do to the game to bring in money, and what they do for like new expansions. You know maybe they need to go down that like Star Wars: The Old Republic, where you buy a chapter, where you buy a new story or something like that. That'd be you know just a bit. But like I said, lots of exciting things. I think going into 2017, um, this game will get a because this obviously that game is going to be completely probably rebranded when we get into the new year, and I think oh, they're just course. getting ready. Just, I think they're just getting ready for the rebrand at this point. Right, and uh, just as one last note on that one, they they did announce that they were doing the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. tie-in. We talked about that previously, and we do know now that they are going to have uh, team-ups added to the game for Ghost Rider yeah. and Quake. Yeah, which is cool. So I, like cool. I like that. I yeah. like that. I like this idea at all. Um, I'll be playing in it. I'll be jumping back into it when they come out. Um, this is the thing, but this is where I feel like games have come to now. It's constantly like new new updates, new events, new patches. You know, rather than the days of all right, you're waiting for a new video game. Now you're just waiting for the next update. You know, you it's becoming almost like conditioned to looking for. I feel like this week is Star Wars Battlefront. Next week is Avengers of the Shield. Next week, the week after. You know, you're starting to get into this thing of you're always playing and whatever is distracting you that week. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, we just got the Pirates of the Caribbean update on Disney Magic Kingdoms. Woo! All right, so what's next? Yeah. And you are, and you're constantly on this, like, what is next? Because if on the days of the old, con- you know, you got free console games, you played it, that was it. Now you're constantly, all right, what's next? What's coming up? And you, but you're being accustomed to it. So when there isn't anything, you're a bit like, oh. But man, this game must be dying. There's nothing yeah. coming out. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's like, I think, you mean a game just comes out, you play it to the end, and then you put it away and you sell it? That, it's quite a, quite a unique function now. You are, you're talking crazy right now, sir. Yeah. Talking right, so we've also got um, some other news. Um, Ice Frozen Free Fall Icy Shot is coming soon. So they've sort of put out a tweet on Disney Game saying it's coming soon. It's been out actually in like soft launch since like March. I was quite fond of thinking of I was like it's Icy Shot. I'm thinking oh I forgot about it. I play I installed it on my phone or my, on my iPad back in like March when I found the soft launch and did a video or two on it and played it and I t- totally forgot that I had it um because it's and it's like it's coming soon it's like wow that's been in soft launch for a long time yeah uh, it. <laughs> yeah because it was originally frozen free fall 2 right yeah. and now it's just frozen uh icy shot and I haven't played it but it, it I've seen the video and it looks like this is just 
Peggle with a frozen skin, mm. um, which I'm 100% behind because Peggle is my favorite casual game. Mm. I love it. Um, it. You know, you shoot the ball and you hit the little dots yeah. and, and they disappear and it plays, uh, you know, Joy to the World when you finish or whatever. Yeah. So I'm sure it plays like it is really Let It Go or something. Yeah, instead. it's really fun. Oh, I don't know. I have my iPad on silent the whole time anyway. Um, <laughs> But no, it's a lot of fun. Um, I I really enjoy it. It's it's fun. It's good. I think it's going to be a big hit. I think. I just can't believe how long it's taken to get them out. It just seems a bit of a yeah, problem. It, it seems very strange, especially since, as near as I can tell, this like isn't really character based. It's not like Magic Kingdoms or even yeah. uh, Emoji Blitz or something like that, where you need to go. Okay, well, we have Anna and Elsa and Olaf in the game. Now we're going to add Sven. It's yeah. like, well, but it's Peggle. You mm. play through the levels, and then you're done. And maybe they add some more levels down the road. The only thing I can think of, they were waiting for, for winter. That was basically, they didn't want to launch in the summer, though, because it's a frozen. I, mean, I don't know. It, it, just... would have, it, it would have made more sense for them to launch it alongside uh, the ride opening up at like, yeah. Disney World or whatever. So It's it's good. It's a lot of fun. Um, yeah. So When it comes out, try it. It's going to be free. Uh, it could easily, easily just drop on the iTunes store anytime this week. I think when they say it's coming soon, that's usually an indication it's imminent. Imminent, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I'm. you had me at Peggle. I yeah. love Peggle, so I'm yeah. going to play it. I mean, yeah. It's fun. It's literally one of those things. If there's, there's, there is, I, and I'm going to be honest, those are the kind, I'd much rather play a mobile game like that then something that's just like click a button and click. That's the, yeah. cause it's a little bit of skill involved in playing a classic game. Okay, we're going to cut two um, quick stories here. Um, basically, kind of interconnected. Um, there's been some job cuts at Disney Interactive. They've cut 250 jobs. About half of them are in the Disney are in the gaming section. The other half. This is because they basically merged like Disney Consumer Products, which is what the toys. They've merged the Disney Interactive. They've also brought in Disney Publishing. Everything's now basically all moving under Disney Consumer Pro and Interactive Products. So every product is now all under one big roof. They rebranded the, their their corporate website. Everything's in there. So there was a few people that were basically they they didn't need people in marketing because they had two people from the same one. So they've let another 250 people go. They've already let some people go at Imagineering. They've already let go of the 300 people when Disney Infinity went. They've released some people at Maker Studios. There's been a lot of corporate restructuring, and so there has been some people go at Disney Games, which would explain, I think, why like Avengers Academy. That's all been it's all been tied up in this lot of interconnecting stuff. They've also announced um, a guy called Chris something. He's gone now from Disney Interactive. Um, there's been a lot of reshuffling going on, and I think again, it's all like about licensing out, and they're all under one big house now. Um, so. There's been a lot of backstage stuff going on, and I don't think you know we really maybe fully understand what's been going on back there, and it might make more sense in the long run of what they've been doing. I mean, honestly, this isn't really too much of a surprise mm. given the whole Disney Infinity thing. I think it was more of a matter of time than anything because they've wanted to outsource everything since about that point. It is, of course, unfortunate whenever they lay off a whole bunch of people and uh, we feel bad for those guys. Hopefully they land on their feet. Um, but yeah, I think with Disney Infinity closing, I think most of these people probably weren't caught as, uh, by surprise the same way that the Avalanche team was. Um, but yeah, it, it's unfortunate, but we kind of knew this was coming. Yeah. Maybe not to this degree, maybe no. not when, but we knew it was coming. Yeah. I think it's more that this is the aftershocks of like, I think Disney Infinity was the big blow and then these these after ones. Um, also... Um, a company called Cast AR has apparently hired a few people from Disney. Now, this was the kind of thing. They've said that they've taken people on. In so they've started a new studio in Salt Lake City. Um, and they have taken on a number of employees. They've not specifically said how many. They just said that they've doubled their... It might be 20, 30 people. So there, there was a little bit of confusion, I think, to people thinking that the entire studio had been taken over. <laughs> but no, they've literally just... They've just Cherry picked and taken on. It's great for the people in the area. I mean, a lot of people have moved on to different companies, have moved away, you know, maybe moved back to where they started from. Uh, but this is not the only people. But they've just. I think this was just this kind of thing. They've definitely they've set up a studio and they they're using a lot of the Disney interactive people that were there or the Avalanche people because there was such a strong. There was hundreds of people with skills in an area, and this company obviously felt that it was an opportunity to use some of those skills. Yeah, I mean, one team's loss is another team's gain, and so long as they're able to put out a product, you know, yeah. whatever that product might be, 
you know, good for them. They, they, I'm sure that they're not the only company that's going to benefit from a lot of very experienced, very talented artists and creators and devs uh, suddenly flooding the market like this. So. Well, this is what I was trying to get through on, a, on something on Twitter the other day, was this thing of, like, normally when a game comes out, the team then pretty much, you know, they'll keep a few people on for, like, so updates or... But usually they don't either, you know, they're either all made redundant or they, the job ends, so therefore they need to find new employment, or they get put onto a new team, or they get moved onto a different project, or they move to a different company. Now that's how the game, that's how the game works. I think this has been tendency that because of games now becoming online and long term, like we've been saying about these updates, there's this idea that the game doesn't end. Well, game development always was quite sort of job focused it's a bit like building a house or building you know you build the house once you finish building the house you go buy it you find it, you go to another one you know and that's what games were of course this online thing was keeping people around for a lot longer yeah i think there's just like a fundamental fundamental misunderstanding of how games are made you know uh and most people don't care which is fine but you know it's an entire process and at different points in in the process different people are needed like once you get to the very end, you no longer necessarily need the artists because mm. the artwork is done. Now they're just coding it into the game. You don't necessarily need the level designers because the levels have been designed. And there's no point in keeping them on staff. And it's just the reality of the situation. Whether or not it should be is another matter entirely. But yeah, for you know, Marvel Heroes is is you, you kind of mentioned was you know, it's a continuous process. They're always adding stuff. Battlefront, they're always adding stuff. But for, you know, those major titles, that's the way it is. But for every title like Marvel Heroes or DC Online, there's 30, there, yeah. there's 30 titles that are, they come out and they're done and the people who worked on it move on and do other stuff. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the times even like ports are done by a different company. I think it's like, say, like, like building a house. I think it's almost like a good example to try and put that to free with. You know, it's like, when you've ha you have the builder in, and then you get the roof person in, and then you get the the water person in, and you get the electrician. You know, the electrician might only be there for a week, but he doesn't. He can't start to. You know, if they're still laying the foundation, he's not there yet. You know, there's that. It's the same thing within a game. I think that's. You know, I think something like Disney Infinity was like people expect people because it was like this constant game. They were constantly working on new content. Mm -hmm. You know, that suddenly ended. You know, and I always feel like you know with with like a game. You know, when you you know when a game comes out and you play through it. You usually just move on to the next game when you finished it, or you play for it again, or whatever. But this online thing just gets people accustomed to having it there all the time, and it sort of leads into that, you know, well, maybe a compulsion, but that kind of feeling that it becomes part of your like your routine, where like mm -hmm. a normal video game doesn't do that. Just gaming becomes part of your routine. You know, I play games at this time, but I might play a new game, or I might play something different. Whereas these games that are around long term, you start becoming people's um, just routine, and that's when it goes when it when they go wrong. So a lot of people can't handle change of routines because of the, how that you know the, how they are, and this, you know that's just that's just quite normal with a lot of people. And I think that is the thing now with these online gaming, this constantly updating, is that it becomes part of people's routines, which gaming never was like that. No, I mean growing up, you you, you played Ninja Gaiden or, or you know um, Mega Man or whatever, and it was done when it was done. And now, you know, through Reddit and Twitter, we can interact with these guys yeah. and we start seeing them as the game. Yeah. And then when they leave, uh, it's mm. it changes how we perceive the game. Yeah. So. I mean, something like Minecraft is a perfect example of, you know, there are people that just play Minecraft continuously. I don't understand. I don't understand it. It's <laughs> the ugliest looking. I've tried playing it. I'm like, this just doesn't feel right. Um, but... You know they're playing it for long periods, and I think this is where it kind of changes. When you know that was never such a big issue, and also like I say, community was this other thing. You never knew about this when I was a kid or when I was a teenager. If you know, if Sega axed the entire company, you you read about it in a mag in a in a magazine about two months later. The, the someone getting cut was probably not even in the pa in the magazine. You didn't know about it. Now you know about it. And I feel this is a thing, even just with Disney as a whole, because um, it was a, like a lovely story of you know like, about this thing about Disney magic. And I just feel like well, Disney magic existed when you were when we were younger because you didn't know about everything that was going on. It was a lot easier when you didn't hear about all the bad stuff. 
Disney were magical. Disney were amazing because now you hear when they lay somebody off or they close something, you hear about it. And this magic scene, oh, they're, they're not as nice, you know, they need, they were always like, they've been like that since the 30s. It's just you never knew about it. And, oh, yeah. you know, and I feel like this is the big issue for Disney. Disney's kind of got this, they've been put on this pedestal because of how we used to remember them. And, of course, everything's now, oh, they you know, it's, it's a slash on Disney, it's a bash on Disney. But they were always like that. You just didn't know it. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's not just Disney. It's everybody. And it, and the other thing is, though, you know, it's not even that you have to seek out the information. People who don't follow news about the Magic Kingdom or, or any of these things, they still knew that the Tower of Terror over in Disneyland was going to get turned into Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, all it takes is a friend of a friend of a friend yeah. to post it on Facebook and it gets likes. And all of a sudden you're like, wait, what? Why is the Tower of Terror yeah. going to Guardians of the Galaxy? And, and you wouldn't have heard about it even five or ten years ago. No, it definitely, it's definitely, it's funny because I have a friend and like, I've sort of, I have said that, you know, I do Disney science stuff. And she was sort of scoffing at that kind of thing. Of, like, she knows that I will know what she's talking about. And like, oh, they get rid of this. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, you know, she, they go you know once every few years but this is kind of thing of like you say that they know more so much more you know when i was a when i when we went to disney when we were youngsters you got to the park and you found a new attraction that was oh my yeah. god that's new. <laughs> that wasn't there the last time i was there or, or you'd walk in and go where's this one gone <laughs> yeah it's uh, not there anymore and that was it I, I remember going um, when I was younger, and we had uh, rented like an apartment, you know, like a timeshare kind of thing, but not quite. And like, oh, this was pretty awesome. And the next time we went, we we're like, oh, we want to do that again because it was great, it was yeah. cheap, it was efficient, and didn't exist anymore. And I'm like, oh, yeah. You just oh, didn't, okay. You didn't, you didn't know. You didn't know about you know your tricks of the trade. You learned as you went along, and you know, oh, there's a there's a new pro. You didn't know about anything. You might see an advert if they were advertising. Usually, there was a big billboard on like the I four saying you know, this new attraction or something like that. But that was it. You know, I think social, I think like social media and stuff is like, you all, everyone's like, has that information so much more to hand, so much easier. And in some ways, expectation, it's just like you say, it's this constant knocking of like the gaming. It's like when you read that, with that fantastic article by Polygon a few weeks ago about the history of Disney Interactive, it's like, they've done this dozens, they've done it like every five years, there seems to be a cycle with this company. It's like yeah. it's not it's nothing new. They've done it before. They've gone through licensing in house, licensing in house, licensing in house. They might go back to in house again, but licensing is not it's not. But then I can't help but feel like license. I still and I'm going to be honest. I think Disney Infinity actually was starting to cause us problems with not having enough variety of video games in the Disney market. I feel it with it getting everything. We weren't getting enough good stuff from everybody else. We were being frozen out because you couldn't get these different teams making different experiences because everything had to be within this model. And I, in some ways, I think it was almost stifling video games for Disney. Yeah. I think maybe in retrospect, what they could have done is made uh, Infinity into like an internal platform, a development platform, mm -hmm. and been, and spun games off from that. Well, okay, so the art styles look similar, but, you know, the Moana game is separate mm -hmm. from the Finding Dory game, but it'd be so much easier to create yeah. them. I almost feel like if they were doing it now, they might have gone down the Amiibo route rather than the... Mm -hmm. um, the Disney and the, the, like there's a new Moana game out and there's new figures which will also work in the toy box you know d d do it that way around and these are just you know these you know that amiibo system could have worked very very well of working into different games but then there's a lot of issues that would have worked into it but you can't I can't help but feel for those few years where we didn't get anything that was outside of Disney you know it's like looking at Marvel's and Star Wars lineup now it's like there's a lot of good stuff coming because they're not tied into one thing and i feel disney got locked into we didn't get a lot of the extra stuff because everything went to disney into in disney infinity yeah and you know we're gonna have to wait and play catch up and see what goes on because we're not going to get a moana game probably and we're not going to get um you know whatever's coming next year we're not going to get the pixar movies mm -hmm. and it's it's i mean we'll get mobile games yeah. woohoo get some mobile games great uh, it means you and I aren't going to have a whole lot to talk about in well, some cases. I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. See, I'm kind of in this line of, I'm, I think the next year is going to be interesting, but then I can't help but feel like we're going to see a lot of short-term stuff of 
you know, maybe a new little big planet with stuff that'll come in and Lego Dimensions, Lego games. I still think we're going to see some Lego games next year. Um, we're also going to get Star Wars Battlefront 2. We're going to get some Telltale. And if that goes chapter episode stuff, that'll keep us entertained for a while. Um, we've got Spider Man. I don't know when that one's coming out, but I'm guessing it's going to be next year around the time the movie hits or something near similar to it. So I think there's going to be lots, but I think Disney wise, yeah, it's going to, I think we're going to be on a, a bit of a, war, a barren wasteland for a year or two. The only thing that does get me is the NX. I don't know if the NX is going to inspire a lot of um, companies to get into doing some basic gaming, some basic tie-ins and kind of, oh, it's on the NX, but it's also on the Xbox and it's just a, a cheaper, you know, tie-in version. The NX is going to inspire, I think, a lot of people for um, basic content. Yeah, uh, and we just got to wait and see what <laughs> some news about the NX. Yeah. Show us the system. Show us the controllers. Show us the specs. Let us see what it is. Uh, the potential is there. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. the potential is there. I have. I've been. Re you know, there was the rumored release date was by a UK um, amiibo that in you know, the beginning of March. There's been a lot of rumors running around of like they're making an announcement this week. Actually, um, been now that Tokyo Game, they don't they don't seem to like playing well with um, others, and so it wouldn't surprise me if in the next couple of weeks we get that information. September October is when we're going to find it out. But I think a lot of developers are going to be looking at the NX and looking at look at the deep 3, 3DS and the Vita. How many games got brought to those devices? Now, the, the NX is supposed to be essentially not far off of PlayStation 4, so they can be scaled to those consoles and stuff as well. And now they're all into licensing. I can see a lot of companies going, this is great. We've suddenly got the, we can get, you know, do a basic smaller um, handheld game, which can also go on to the other consoles. I think there's a lot of it, a lot of expectations for, I think, for me, to see a lot more explosion of games over the next coming years, but it will just take years for them to get going. I mean, it's really going to depend on the development. Uh, how easy will it be for developers to port a game from the PS4 to the NX? Because mm -hmm. that's always what we end up hearing. Like in the last cycle, uh, a lot of developers were like, oh, we like developing for the 360 because it's easy. And developing for the PS3 is a yeah. total pain. And then it kind of reversed this season with the Sony and the, the uh, Microsoft console. Mm -hmm. So we have to wait and see. Because if the developers are like, we could, the power's there, but they make developing for it such a pain that we don't want to do it, then mm. it's dead in the water. So yeah. we'll see what happens. It should be should be fun. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I, I'm, the more I hear about the NX, the more I'm actually intrigued because I quite like this concept of it being like a handheld with a, a TV device because suddenly it's like, well, you've, it's like almost having that, if you had that 3D, it's like they're literally, they, I think someone said it, it's, like almost, it's, it's going to be like a reboot for Nintendo. They're putting everything into one proper platform and pushing one platform going forward. Um, you know, and then they'll have mobile kind of ticking on the side. But I think I think we're going to see lots of Disney stuff and Star Wars. I th you know, they're going to be doing lots of licensed stuff on this platform. So I'm I'm not with it because I think it's looking at how they've been on the 3DS and the DS over the years. Game companies like doing small, quick tie-ins on these platforms because they're what kids play. And Disney is yeah. for kids, and I think I think it just it's a the NX is that's where I'm looking at it going. I think this is where we're going to see, and then if it's scalable to the other consoles, it makes it even easier for them. Yeah, absolutely, and <laughs> we just need the information. Mm -hmm. We need to know yeah. how it's going to go. But I do feel like, especially like with some of these Disney little games, of their target audience is kids. It's like Disney Magical World Two, or Art Academy Two, or Olaf's Quest, or you know, Phileas and Furbins, but you know, these are aimed at kids, these are kids' games, they are turned around a little bit faster, they aren't churned, you know, this whole thing about licensed games being rubbish and stuff, well, sometimes it's just because the target audience and who they're building them for don't require what, you know, <laughs> Kingdom Hearts or, you know, Spider-Man does. There's a different clientele, and I think that's where well, there's always this, like, thing of, oh, they're, well, for kids, they're fun. what they are is what they need. Yeah, do you, you think the kid cares that, oh, the graphics on this look like they were developed for a PS2? No, the kid doesn't care. The kid's just having fun. Um, honestly, we could even see stuff on the NX, like upgraded versions of Disney Emoji Blitz or, or uh, the Sum Sum game and all that stuff. Mm. And as long as the graphics are updated, mm. to, you know, uh, for HD resolutions, 
Yeah, I could see it totally being a hit. Yeah, and I actually hadn't even thought about it the other way around of bringing mobile dev- mobile stuff onto the NX. You know, these these apps might be even you might see even more stuff that way. You know, something like you say, it could work. if you've got your tablet here with emoji. I that, I'm going to be honest, that 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 would work very well. Um, I think that would it would work counter argument. Whereas, you know, some of the mobile stuff, if they turn them into games, proper paid games, that could work. You know, they tried it with Frozen Free for Two and Puzzle Quest. I'm not entirely too sure if that worked very well for them or not. But the, I still feel those were the wrong, maybe the wrong kind of games to try it with. You know, I think you know Peggy, like you know, like Frozen Free for Two could work very nicely. But then they wouldn't even surprise me if that did come out on a console. It could work. See, that's the kind of game I would expect them to charge for up front because, you know, monetizing, I don't know, gameplay or whatever is is very difficult with that. Whereas if you were to say, uh, we'll do Disney Emoji Blitz and we'll charge you $3 for it, yeah. well, half the game is unlocking characters. Yeah. So... Yeah, I don't know like, if that would work so well. I I think I, it wouldn't surprise me if they if they if that if this does if we did see a little bit more of this, especially if it's a touch screen. Therefore, they've already got it built in, and I think mm-hmm. it could I think it could work. Obviously, it depends if it's you know the controller and things, but it wouldn't surprise me if we start seeing a little bit more content because then it just becomes another device. Yeah, and you know what? There are tons of mobile developers who would be like. Oh, we we can get our mobile game onto a top name, top brand console easily. They would be lining up to yeah. to put this on there. So now so. I'm kind of kind of I think at this point now looking at the NX, I and it's like I think it could this could be a big jump. This could be exactly what Nintendo needs, but it also could be I, as much as like the Wii U was a big failure. I do feel like they've, they've, they're looking at the industry going... The fact that they were working with Apple on a, on a Mario, they're looking at this differently. They are, they're they not the same company. Well, they can't be the same company because if they just try to repeat the Wii U or even the Wii, it's going to blow up in their faces. Yeah. I mean, financially, they can survive it. I mean, the, they've got so much money banked, yeah. they can do whatever they want. But obviously, yeah. they'd rather be successful. Yeah. Well, I think on that now, I think we've done all of our things. We were going to do a quick recording of something else afterwards for a couple of weeks, but I think we have to do that next week because we've got to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fair enough. Um, but on that note, um, I think we are pretty much done. I don't. I think, like I say, it was a bit of a f- fun-packed week with Kingdom Hearts, Battlefront, and Marvel Heroes, and a couple of um, sort of mobile games. This is kind of a nice, bit decent pack of information, really. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're trickling the information out, but. It's there's enough different stuff that even two or three announcements really gives plenty to talk yeah, about. It's quite amazing. I think you know, th- th- like we say, the, the 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 change in like gaming of how this stuff rolls out now is very different. It's not like right, there's a new game coming out in December, in September, and that's what we're waiting for. It's just constant little little snippets and stuff. So that's cool. So I'm looking forward to playing Star Wars Battlefront and a bit more Kingdom Hearts this week. That's my kind of that's my two. Things for this week. <laughs> kind of blast. Uh, I I will be playing uh, Dragon Quest Seven on my Nintendo DS. Ooh. So that that is going to be my week. Yes. Uh, that and I'll be traveling. So yes. it, yeah. that won't imp- impact the uh, podcast. We'll still yeah. be. Yeah, normal cool. time next week, but yeah. I will be traveling this week. Yes, no, that's cool. Well, on that note, guys, remember to check out our Infinity and Beyond Facebook group. So we're do- talking a lot of video games over there. So jo- come join in the discussion. Come in and post your stuff as well. We know what you picked up, what you've been playing. What you what you're playing at this precise minute kind of is very much all over the place in terms what of what people want to play. What do you want to play? You know, join in the discussion. I'd love to see you over there. Yeah, um, you can also find us over at Twitter at DisKingdom.com. You can also find me at Rob Palmer UK. You can also find us over on Patreon forward slash DisKingdom, where every little um, just throwing us a couple of bucks can make all the difference on doing bits and pieces like this. And then finally, James, where can they find you? Um, you can find me on Twitter at IHI underscore James and uh, VagabondPeak.com. Where you can find your top-notch products at VagabondPeak.com. Yes, you can find <laughs> your top-notch comic book discussion products. Yes. <laughs> so if you're into comic books and stuff, you want to check that one out. Um, yes, yeah, so no, I definitely want to check that one out. There's a um, great new um, Haunted Mansion um, trade book out this week. So I'm just Yes, I need to check that out. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's on my to-do list this week. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and we shall see you guys in a later video. Laters.